Can you please take a look at the deck stats for Timna Frasius? Yes, I can do that. But you're not gonna be happy. TNT Timna Frasius is currently doing pretty poorly. So from a total of 104 decks that have entered into various tournaments with these two commanders, with various different builds that look something like this. We have gotten an average win rate of uh, basically 19% or 18.97. By simply calculating the wins, 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 loss, loss, loss and draws, 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 we can calculate the average. To put that into perspective for you, here is Nayela's at 23.21, Blue Farm 26.09, Atraxa 26.03. This is actually kind of interesting. So Frasius and Bruce actually have a better average win rate compared to Frasius and Tumna. Now the result from this one is not statistically significant because we only have 28 decks. But with Frasius and Smasher, you're getting a 25.95. So the commander pair is not doing good. And in this video, we're gonna try to answer potentially why that is so. Well, I do think we've still seen some kind of information. For example, if you swap out Tymna and basically replace black with red, and you go sans black with Bruce and Frasius, your win rate actually kind of increase. But if you take that one step further and swap out white with black, and you go smasher, you have sans white, then yeah, the win rate increases even more. Ikran Krom actually has a higher win rate compared to T and to Frasius and Tymna as well. Same color identity as Frasius and Smasher. So it could definitely be something with the color selection here. Lacking red basically might be a problem. And that could definitely be the case. So what we're looking at here are the average win rate on the decks playing all three combinations of Intuition, Savines and Andul Breach. We have 736 that are playing all three from a grand total of 3740 decks and they are getting an average win rate of 24.3 which is a positive thing. Displace your kit and Emil the Blessed and Dockside 25.31. Add Nauseum, Necropotence and Underworld Breach 405 total decks play all three and they get an average win rate of 23.97. Bonapona win the Red Final Fortune and Necropotence 104 decks are playing all three and they get an average win rate of 25.9. Adnaz, Brain Freeze, the two red cards, Jeska, Swill and Andul Breach. 234 decks are playing all four and they are getting an average win rate of 25.17. The takeaway here is that red is good. But we can't play red, so we are moving towards combos that looks like this, kinda. The Red Return, Fate Stitcher, Narcomibia and Hermitruid. Now the result is not statistically significant because we only have 13 decks that are playing all four of these cards in the same deck list. But when you have an extremely low sample size that is also showcasing that people, players are opting away from that strategy. So that's also an indicator that's not recommended really. And as you can see there, the win rate is lower than the average win rate of what Tim and Frasius actually got. Now you don't have to play the Fate Stitcher and the Narcomiba, you can just go Hermit Druid and Thassa Circle and of course Dread the Turn in there as well. But as you can see here, only 56 decks are playing this. This is making the results statistically significant, but the win rate doesn't climb like that high. So I think we need to look at some inspiration. What are the people who are playing Tim and Frasius actually doing? TNT Deranged by Froku. He's playing Teferi, he's playing Displacer Kitten, which means if you scroll down, let's see Mox Amber, but no Mox Upol. Well, Teferi and Displacer Kitten will still work with Mana Vault and Soul Ring. Chromox will also kind of work. Yule Lotus and Lotus Petal will also work. And Mana Crypt will also work. We actually have some statistics for this. So Displacer Kitten, Mox Amber, Mox Opal and Teferi 40 decks are playing all of these four together in the same decklist. It's very rare that you have both Mox Opal and Mox Amber in the same decklist, but they're getting an impressive 25 average win rate. And this is something that Frasius and Tumna could actually utilize. Now Frasius and Mox Amber is actually quite good because you're often going to have a Mox Amber alive. Now I would like to point out that the most decks 
that are playing Displacer Kit and Teferi and those two artifacts are also playing Dockside and Emil the Blessed because Displacer Kitten and Dockside is pretty amazing. Now, you can't do that in TNT, but I still think that this is something to consider actually. He's playing Ad Nauseum and Talion. Talion is a very new card and it's very hard to say like how good it actually is, but we have 63 decks that are playing both Ad Nauseum and Talion in the same deck list. And sadly, the result is not amazing. We also have Devoted Druid, and if we scroll down, Swift Reconfiguration. The Celestia Infinite Mana combo. We actually have statistics combining this with Ardenosium. 17 decks are playing all three, which is not that many, so take it with a grain of salt. But the win rate is still not that amazing. 21.69. Okay, it's not bad. It's actually rather okay. But I would like to emphasize that the players are basically not opting for this combo. This is not a popular combination, so to say. Very few decks are playing all three together. This deck list is playing all three Opposition Agent, Orcus Bowmaster, and Daffy Voidwalker. All the great stacks hate bears. And from 3740 entries. We have 546 that play all three of those creatures. And they are in an average win rate of 21.67. So among all different decks out there that are putting these three cards together in their deck list, it is uh, not showcasing in an amazing performance, so to say. If you look at these individually one by one, Opposition Agent is always getting a very good result. Orcish Bowmaster is getting a somewhat of okay result, and Offy Voidwalker is usually getting a bad result. Now, tripling down on all three doesn't look like it's recommended. Let's look at more deck lists for more inspiration. Ooh, TNT B Rector Fast Hulk. And I see the picture behind here, so I guess there's a. Uh, yep. Protean Hulk. Now I don't have that much statistics on the Protean Hulk because there aren't that many players who actually put it inside their deck. It's kind of died out a little bit when Flash was banned. This deck list is not playing Ad Nauseum, that kind of makes sense. I mean we have 7 mana, 5 mana, 4 mana, Body Snatcher 4 mana, Academy Rector 4 mana, then we have Pattern of Rebirth that is 4, so yeah it's a very expensive CMC and yeah, Force of Will 4, oh, and Deadly Rolic 4, yeah. This deck is playing Carrion Feeder and Viseria Seer, and I did see Altar of Dementia, so he has three different sack outlets, which means that Academy Rector, Academy Rector comes into play, she dies, she finds Pattern of Rebirth, you sacrifice the thing you put Pattern of Rebirth onto, and then boom, you have Hulk, and you sacrifice Hulk with the sack outlet, and then you find your Fezzes Oracle and the uh, Activated Sleeper and some other things, and win. We have a Natural Order to find Protean Hulk, potentially. We also have a Cooling the Weak for another potential sack outlet, one-time use, but still. I have actually used, not Snuff uh, Slaughter Pack, but I have used uh, Snuff Out on a Protean Hulk. I have paid 7 mana for a Protean Hulk and used, uh, you can use Slaughter Pack on it, but I've used Snuff Out on it. Felt great, and I won. Let's look for more inspiration. Christian. This decklist is going for Abdel Adrian and Ardnos. If he's playing Abdel Adrian, I'm guessing we have, yeah, Animated and Necromancy. Now we don't have that many decks actually playing the combination that you're looking at, because it's not very popular, so the result is not statistically significant, so we can't trust the win rate. But 15 decks are playing all four, Abdel Adrian, Ardnas, Animated and Necromancy, and they are getting an average win rate of 24.32. I also decided to take a look at what happens if you just swap out Ad Nauseum and replace it with Rasakef. So we have 13 decks that are playing all three, Abdel Adrian, Animated, Necromancy and Rasakef, which is very low, but the win rate suddenly dropped to 16.18. I would like to point out as well that whenever I'm looking at Rasakef in general as an individual card, it's usually getting like 10% average win rate. So the suggestion might be that it's better to ignore Rasakef 
and go add Nas instead. Even though Abdel Adrian has a CMC of 5 and will hurt your add Nas, it looks like a better option. Here we have a decklist T and T by Yrod 2070. Here we have Hermit Druid, Kinnan Bounder Prodigy, and if we have Kinnan, yeah, there we go, Basalt Monolith. And also, we have Adnos. Sadly, we only have 16 decks that are playing all four Adnos, Basalt Monolith, Kinnan, and Frasius. This means that it could be Frasius with a combination of either Tumna or Smasher in this case. But we're getting a win rate that is actually pretty good. 24.69. I mean, Kinnan is great, Adnosium is great, Basalt Monolith is a little bit mediocre. Or, well, it's not terrible, but it's not good either. But I think this is showcasing a potential. We can dig a little bit, or well, I did dig a little bit deeper for those that are asking, but Adnosium, Basalt Monolith, Hermit Druid, Swift Reconfiguration, and Kinnan Bounder Prodigy, so a lot of different combos together, but we only have two decks that played all five of these together. Which means that we can't trust this win rate. So that 18-18 is nothing. Now the reason why I showcased that picture is because it was a repetitive pattern when I was looking into this commander pair in general. You see, you can build TNT in so many different variations of ways. And that meant that when I was looking at individual cards on their own statistics, which I'm normally doing, I haven't showcased anyone in this video, I usually got very low inclusion rates because people were playing so many different variations of things. So it was very hard to say anything from that. Also the cards that were played heavily, nothing really impacted the win rate in general. It usually stayed around the same. Like I couldn't find a single card that peaked the performance in general. So the aim with this video was to look into what other decks are doing and gain inspiration. Trying to look at the whole completion of various different commanders and what forms of combos they are doing and look into what Timna and Frasius potentially could be doing. Once again, the inclusion rate is very low. We have 8 decks that are playing all for Displacer Kitten and Teferi with the commanders Timna and Frasius, but they're getting an amazing potential here. 28.57 We can't trust the win rate, but it's showcasing a potential, something we should experiment a little bit more with. And it's not a big step adding in a Kinnan Basalt Monolith and an Ad Nauseam in there. As well as potentially combining it with Devoted Druid Swift Reconfiguration as well. Now I also did look into the Revi, Emil, Gaia's Cradle, Tumna and Frasius as the commander. And yeah, it, normally this is a combo for Cissé, basically. It's basically the auto-include go-to combo for Cissé. So we have 113 decks that are playing this with Cissé as the commander. And she's getting an amazing 26.24 average win rate by that. But you could put this combo in Timna and Frasis as well. Now the, <laughs> we only have one deck, but I'm showcasing it anyways. I don't think this is like great in Tumna and Frasius, but maybe. Like, Tumna wanna go to combat, Derevi has flying, that's good. Derevi connecting to something, or even Frasius now connecting to something, means an untap, that's great. Gaia's Cradle is already auto-included in this deck already. And you only need to add Emil, and there you go. So how you wanna build your deck is totally up to you. I hope this video have given you some ideas and inspirations of suggestions. Now in the collection of information for this video, I did look at a lot of different things, but nothing really stood out in general that showcased a good suggestion. Because of that, I, like I said in the video, I chose to showcase what we maybe should be looking towards. But if you want to know anything specific regarding an individual card and the win rate about that specific card, feel free to leave that in the comments below and I will give you the answer of the win rate of whatever card you're curious about.